everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. We are here talking with another one of our authors. And uh, we love talking with authors on the podcast. And today we have author Nancy Nagel, the author of The Secret Ingredient and other books. And Nancy, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. You're so welcome. Thanks for inviting me. I've been looking forward to it all morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, so this is your first time on the podcast. So I can give you a chance to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you got inspired to you begin writing. Mm. So um, I'm Nancy Nagel and I hail from Virginia, which is so appropriate since our motto is Virginia is for lovers. Yeah. And, um, you know, I stumbled into writing. I was um, an executive. I was a senior vice president at Bank of America and I had a beautiful 20 year career with them. Um, but uh, somewhere along that career, I started to feel a little restless and uneasy. I had uh, an assignment that made me feel less than wonderful. And so I thought, you know, I need to even the scales. I want to do something good. And what popped into my mind was writing a book because I had always been a voracious reader. Jane Ann Krentz got me through divorces, bad husbands, bad <laughs> hair days, bad job. Yeah bosses, you know, and um, I, you'd think I'd have been smart enough to know it was gonna be really hard to write a book, but I was not. So it took me about nine years to write that first book. And um, by the time 2014 rolled around, I had seven or eight books out and I lost my husband to a short battle with cancer. And at that time I decided I was going to pivot. I took an early retirement. I moved to North Carolina, I started writing full time and I've never looked back. Oh my and, gosh. Uh, life is good. I don't miss corporate America at all. <laughs> so you went from doing something very frustrating to doing something even more frustrating, arguably. <laughs> I know in the right writing books is just a picnic and it, it no. is hard. It is hard work, yeah. but it is so rewarding. And I, I love getting lost in my little small towns that I write and I love meeting readers. You know, that's yeah. the part is that we have that instant connection because we're book lovers and I was a mm -hmm. reader first. So, yeah. you know, it, we just, there always are kind of people. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to ask, did you always have a love for the romance genre in particular? mostly romance and women's fiction you know I kind of cut my teeth on um a lot of like Danielle Steele and whatever my mama was reading um uh -huh. as a little girl I would spend all my time at the library and I just could not get my hands on enough books and so as soon as my mama let me start reading after her you know you feel like such a big girl I started reading all that stuff and I'm sure I didn't understand half of what I read but uh <laughs> so yeah. it's and kind of that, but I, and I've always loved mysteries too. Although um, I've written a few cozy mysteries, I am not smart enough to even figure out an episode of Magnum PI. So <laughs> I'm always just like so bewildered in the whole mystery book. Yeah, you had done, I saw that, that you've done some cozy mysteries and some women's fiction, usually with a collaborator. Yes, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> that must be interesting to write one of those books, especially with somebody else. Yeah, it's fun. You know, I really uh -huh. love collaboration. Uh -huh. <clears throat> it wants to bring something different to the table, you know, and um it and it's all about the story. You know, there's yeah. goes at the door and you just start writing and it's fun because at the end of the book you don't even remember who wrote what. You know, it's right. just about the story. It's a collaboration. Yeah. yeah awesome. That's cool. Love it. Yeah. So romance is like just flourishing right now. It's practically saving publishing. And I'm just curious, why Why do you think it is having a moment, such a moment? Well, the genre? You know, it's, it's a difficult world out there. You know, mm -hmm. things are tough and, you know, we're coming out of, you know, the pandemic and all that kind of stuff. And I think people are more sensitive to what's going around them. than mm -hmm. maybe before, you know, you get more caught up in the hustle bustle. But, um, you know, I think we all want to feed our hearts with hope and, yeah. um, I think that's what romance is all about. <laughs> yeah. Family well, and I, I, I also think that uh, very little media is actually made for for women uh, these days. I mean, you have your Hallmark, you have your other brands, but but uh, most stuff is made for seventeen year old boys. It's no big secret. Uh, and uh, and so I think that publishing we do like make the romance genre. It's, it's <laughs> nice to have. have uh, one bastion, you know, left that, uh, I mean, 17 year boys can like romance novels. That's fine. But, uh, it's nice to have something that's just made for, that's made primarily to appeal to women is, is a nice thing. I think. Yeah, I think so too. And I, you know, I think it also 
strengthens kind of our sisterhood, our friendship. Yeah, I agree. You know, even though it might be about the romance, it's, it's about relationships in general. So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) so would you say you're a pantser or a plotter? I'm a plotter and I have to be um, because I am a terrible procrastinator. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I would never come in on time if I didn't do some plotting and some planning. (laughs) Yeah. I think you have to, especially if you're doing a kind of like series or something, I mean, it would make sense that you'd have to, you know, or to pitch it to your publisher, you have to have some planning at least, but I do think here, so this is kind of funny. So the first book I ever wrote, I was totally just kind of pants in it. I was doing right. But I do think it's easier to pitch a book before you've written the book. Uh Uh-huh time you've written the book you know the book so well and every little you oh. want it. so it's hard to boil it down to kind of yeah. a log line or a couple sentences so I, I try to when I'm plotting and starting you know a new book or a new series uh-huh. come up with kind of the the log lines or how I'm going to pitch it then because it's once I get everything in my head I can't boil it down <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I didn't thought of it that way, but yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> do you? Uh, do you? Are you working on multiple books at the same time? Usually, I am. Yeah, yeah almost always. And you know what? No matter how hard I try to plan, things always come in at the same time. So yeah. I'll. I have a book that's due, you know, and then I'll be editing and then I'll be reading first pass pages and trying to pitch a book all at the same time. So mm-hmm. I'm just keeping the people straight is kind of difficult. And I'll admit there have been times when I've gotten edits back and they'll be like, who is Sheriff Dan? You know, and I'll be like, <laughs> that's not the guy in this book. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. In this book. That's funny. <laughs> You're like wrong book. Like, <laughs> ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Well, I saw in your bio that you not only had worked in financing, which is interesting, but that you have a 76 acre farm. I did. Yes. My yeah. late husband and I had a 76 acre farm. He was a goat farmer. That's ah. what he did. And we were very active in the 4-H. We were instrumental in getting the meat goat class in the state farm. And I was the master of ceremonies for seven years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> At the meat goat show, I used to know all about how to judge confirmation and everything. <laughs> but we really loved, you know, having all the the four legged kids and the two legged kids, the four agers in our lives. And um, for people that know me and knew me from back in those days, there's almost always a mention of a goat somewhere in my book. It's like a oh. little. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, did you ever try the goat yoga? Yes. Well, you know, <laughs> if you're a goat farmer, you go yoga by accident. Right. They're really interactive. It's kind of like owning a herd of puppies. You know, they're mm. very um, curious and very people oriented. They always run right up to you. And if you sit down, they're all going to be climbing all over. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, goat yoga is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who thought of that? Like what a random, maybe it's somebody, maybe a farmer was doing yoga and like you're saying it would, <laughs> Yeah, because it happened by accident. Will happen. Yes. And I could see, you know, 
having goats on your farm is just so relaxing and they're very loving. So I could see somebody very close to nature having a little yoga retreat yeah. uh -huh. by accident. <laughs> write that book it's a marketable <laughs> thing <I know. laughs> people are creative that's for sure yes. uh, so you said it took nine years to write your first book what was the process like getting that first deal I'm always curious about that yeah so it was kind of interesting um I was so excited I had actually gotten a deal with a small press for that story first and I was so excited mm -hmm. and um I had gone to Book Expo in New York City that year, and I had all these little organza bags with sweet tea candy and tea bags and a little card about the book because the book was called Sweet Tea and Secrets. And so I'm handing these out, just trying to build buzz about my book that was going to come out that July. And I think Book Expo that year was in February or March. And the year I was there was the year that Montlake Romance was launching with Amazon publishing. And so I had gone over because I just wanted to understand their business strategy because I'm still a business girl, you know, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just chatting with them. And of course the conversation turned to goats as it often did back then. <laughs> and um, we just hit it right off and they were like, Oh, well, you've got to send us your book. I'm like, Oh, my book's already coming out with somebody else, you know, but I'll keep your card just in case. So July 1st comes and the book's supposed to come out and it's like nowhere. And then I start to realize that this small publisher just really doesn't know what they're doing, you know? And so I had given them two books. And so out of focus was the second one. And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to want out of focus back. I understand you've already moved forward on this one, but this is not going how we planned. So I'm going to want that other book back. And she said, well, you know what? Maybe you just need to take them both back. I'm like, okay. So I called Montlake Romance. And I was like, hey, remember? Goats. <laughs> and they ended up offering me a three book deal. And so the first three books um, were all set in Adams Grove. Out of Focus originally wasn't an Adams Grove book, yeah. um, but turned it into one because we were going to have three books coming out really fast because you know how that happens. Once you get your first deal, things are steamrolling. So mm -hmm. for those of you that are writing your first book, keep on writing while you're trying to sell it because you're going to be ahead of the game when you get that offer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, you just got to be tenacious. Um, so yeah, so it was really funny how it all worked out. It ended up really just being, um, you know, that, that interest, a uh, very casual interaction. I wasn't trying to land a deal with them. We just, a, you know, I think the big thing about authors or writers who are trying to become published is they try to be what they think everybody wants them to be. And really you just need to be yourself, be genuine. Yeah. Tell your story the way, way you tell it because nobody else can tell it like you do. And then the right things will happen. And I think that's exactly what happened with Sweet, with Sweet Tea and Secrets. Yeah. yeah. I love that story because you probably were sort of more confident in yourself because you already had the deal. So what do you so have to lose? Was, yeah. I wasn't trying to sell myself at all. Yeah. I was I was just talking about goats, you know. <laughs> <laughs> probably how I would have led anything with a publisher really, you know, cause they'd be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> if in doubt, talk about goats. That's what we learned from this interview. <laughs> it, was, it, was super, it was a wonderful lifestyle. You know, we lived yeah. out you know, on the, the acreage and from my office, you know, I'm doing international calls for bank of America. And so I worked from home most of the time yeah. when I wasn't traveling, I traveled a lot back then. Right. And so I could sit at my desk and look out the window and see the goats running up the hill, the kids nursing, my husband walking out. And as soon as he walked out, all the goats would run to him. And he was tall and broad shouldered. And I still had butterflies even after 20 years of marriage to him. I mean, Aww, so I love just, that. Well, it was a beautiful lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's great. I mean, and it just goes to show the 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 impact that can from just being a nice person, just being friendly, you know, yes. that you can get so much in life. Just you know, being interested in people, introducing yourself to people, being nice. Being kind. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that yeah. casual smile at the checkout counter, you know, when the lady's slamming your stuff across the scanner. Yeah. I mean, it, it is funny. And I try to, I, I think that my books really kind of elevate that. The kindness, the being yourself, embracing your own gifts, even if they seem quirky or different than anybody else's, because that's what makes us unique and a successful part of, of the environment, right? Yeah. And our special thing to the table. And you're right. Being a nice person, it does pay off. It should. And it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Well, very good. So you've had a bunch of books at this point turned into movies, a lot on Hallmark. Uh, What is that process kind of like? Oh, wow. It was a dream come true. (laughs) (laughs) So your first one was Christmas Joy, right? Yeah, it was Christmas. Okay. Story. It was funny because my agent um, and I didn't have an agent for like the first five years. Um, and then I was at a conference and Random House wanted to talk to me and they were real excited about this project. And but they said I had to have an agent. And so I went and got an agent, you know. And um, so anyway, I'm with this agent and she says, so where do you want to be in five years? What are your dreams? What are your goals? And I was like, yeah, as I'm going through them, it's just like a job interview. Right. And so, um, but I mentioned the Hallmark. I was like, you know, I've always been this huge Hallmark fan. I would love to have Hallmark maybe. And she went, yeah, yeah but everybody else, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to get one. Um, but uh, so it was funny because I was doing a Facebook party and it was Christmas time. I had written my first Christmas book, Christmas Joy, and it was with my editor, but we hadn't edited it or anything. And so I was doing a Facebook party just to get more you know, friends and readers or whatever. And it was for the Christmas note, which had a military angle. And I grew up in the Norfolk, Virginia Beach area. So military has always been a huge part of our family, even though I didn't have any active military directly in mind. And um, so I'm tweeting, trying to get people to come to this little party. And I get a message back from the account, the Christmas note on Twitter, the old, <laughs> the old Twitter, the new X. And um, it said, hey, we uh, thanks for building buzz about our new movie. And I sent them back a note and said, hey, big, big Hallmark fan. So excited. And then uh, about uh, a week later, I got a text back from them, but it was a direct message that time. And they said, we didn't realize you were an author. Maybe one of your books will be a Hallmark movie someday. And oh my gosh, I almost cried when I read it. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, be humble. This is, yeah. you know, they're not offering you anything. They're just being nice, you know? And so I, after I caught my breath, you know, I sent back a note and I said, a girl can dream. Thank you. I'm so excited about your movie. And um, about two weeks later, my agent got a call and they were interested. Crown Media, directly from them, um, was interested in seeing the, the manuscript for Christmas Joy. Well, that was awesome, except that we hadn't edited it yet. You know, all that it was in was a first draft and it had been there for nine months. All I remember was Joy was the main character because she was in the title. So, <laughs> so um, she connected me and the, pu- the publisher, the editor together. We got to work, got it back out. And a few months went by before we heard anything, but then they finally did option it. And then the following year on Valentine's, I was on my patio um, <laughs> having, get, cooking out, you know, because it's a beautiful day yeah. in North Carolina of that day and we were cooking steaks on the grill and my phone rang and I was kind of pushed it aside because it's Valentine's and um it's like well who is I said it's my agent and um he said well answer it and I did and she said I would never would have called you on Valentine's (laughs) but I think you're really going to want to hear this news uh they're getting ready to put your movie in production and we're gonna fly you oh my gosh yeah so uh, yes I flew out and I got oh you did yes It was amazing. It was so surreal. And um, it was funny because when they took me to the, you know, where they were shooting the movie, it was in this small town. I think Maple Ridge, I think is where they shot that one. And there were blueberry farms. And so that was like home for me. I was like, yeah. And uh, (laughs) Aunt Ruby in the book lived in this little, you know, the typical Virginia, North Carolina farmhouse. It's white. It's stories. It has a wraparound right well they cruise me up to this huge <laughs> and i it's not a log cabin because this thing had wings right but huge log home it was just i was like oh my gosh ruby got a major upgrade <laughs> <laughs> there's more to hallmark than just <laughs> yeah well she had to she's gonna be making like three hundred thousand cookies like i know right <laughs> so it was beautiful i cried yeah. the whole day on set um, they, when I first, they took me to video village and so I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what that was. It sounded really awesome. And yeah. they took basically a little 10 by 10 black tent, <laughs> but there was a, um, big director's chair and I'm short, I'm like five, two. And so, you know, I can really get up in it, but there's a director's chair with my name on it. And I sat there and it had the screens and, um, they started shooting that first movie. It was a indoor scene with snow outside. So the guy with the snow blowers is blowing snow to beat the van. So you can see it, you know, from where they're shooting. Yeah. 
It's coming over my coat and I can feel my hair getting bigger <laughs> and they stay action. And it was my favorite scene in the whole book that it, I mean, it was just amazing how that yeah. happened. Nobody knew that was my favorite scene. I'd never told you <laughs> it was my favorite scene, but it's the one where she drops that green ornament and it breaks. And it was oh like, yeah. That's the scene they were filming. And I just cried. And the, the director <laughs> came over and she said, Nancy, are you okay? <laughs> and I, like, well, do you like it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. And I mean, it was just like the words that were in yeah. my heart were coming back to me. And it was just a little overwhelming. Yeah. You know? I but bet. it's interesting and, and kind of a tie-in too. So um as we go back to the hotel where they're they've got all the stars staying there. And so I'm like nervously looking around the whole time. <laughs> I had lunch with a couple of the girls from Crown Media from the not the uh -huh. New York office yeah they were showing me pictures on their telephone of happy the dog and happy the cat and other little animals they've had in the office because of course we're talking about goats again because that's me <laughs> and um they showed me this picture of this little pink and gray micro pig i mean he was like in their hands and they were smooching on him <laughs> and i was like oh y'all i'm gonna write a book and i'm gonna have my heroine have a micro pig and she's gonna march him down main street and that happens to be the secret ingredient which we just re <laughs> that's funny. so that's that was what inspired that little pig and he didn't make it into the movie <laughs> yeah well it, it, it's a really fun did you come up with the uh idea of the cookie crawls as something you'd been a part of uh, or uh, how did I you have never been a part of a cookie crawl um you know, I've been on a pub crawl before and it was pretty fun <laughs> but in a whole different way because I'm not a big drinker because um, I think we added it up and it was really thousands and thousands of cookies it was is how lot. many that you're making like, yeah, I had parts so I kind of took parts of my favorite things you know having yeah. a holiday open house where you <laughs> over bake you know for the event cookie swaps my mom and I used yeah. to those swaps and I love that it is so yeah. hard to be able to commit to it though <laughs> it is yeah it will so our friend Elisa Lucas it's her, Christmas Joy is like her favorite Hallmark Aww. movie yeah for real and she is just like what's a cookie crawl <laughs> recap she was so excited yeah, about this whole thing and I'm right. like so, we need you know, to we need to make that a thing I mean come on yeah. And, and I've heard some people doing it in their town now, but um, in the little town that I was living in, when I wrote Christmas Joy, they had like a, um, you know, a tour where you visited all the houses and they had a few, uh -huh. people, but nothing like the yeah. cookie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by W Rated, the podcast where we willingly watch the world's worst rated movies. Join me, Daisy. And me, Claire, as we break down the IMDb Bottom 100, choosing a different film from the list every episode. We take a deep dive into the plot, production, release and reviews, usually with a special guest to uncover if these films are truly as bad as everyone says they are. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods and anywhere else you find your podcasts. So with uh, The Secret Ingredient, it was originally published under Hallmark Publishing, and now it's getting this uh, reissue from Harpeth Road. Um, so what was the process like writing it originally, and then how has it been kind of re uh, revisiting it? Yeah, so I had, you know, I was tapped by Hallmark to write um, the novel adapt or the novels for the movies that were already out, Christmas and Evergreen. Oh, that's right. <laughs> three for them and um they and I had said well you know I'd be happy to write you something original so that was kind of how it all started and mom and I aside from Hallmark we love some food network oh my gosh <laughs> and I love those baking competitions yeah. I adore them and I am like a 50 50 baker half the time my stuff just rocks the other half the time I <laughs> toss it and start over because it just yeah. doesn't work and so um, Same. <laughs> I, exactly and that's okay you know yeah. but I do plan ahead if I'm making something for an event I make sure I have time for a second chance <laughs> but uh so that's kind of how the the whole premise of the secret ingredient came up because I thought well it's gonna be a love story like Hallmark but it's gonna be food networking and I had no idea um that they were gonna get Monique Chohan to be in the movie 
So, I mean, I was like, oh, I yeah. can't believe I didn't get invited to set for that one. I, because <laughs> I <love her>. I <laughs> Maybe it was a good thing. Uh, and I love Aaron Cahill. I love Brandon. It was just like the perfect thing, you know. And Aaron is from the Charlottesville, Virginia area. So I'm a Virginia girl. She's a Virginia girl. So that just made me so excited. It just felt right. Yeah. And um, yeah, so th- that was kind of how the story came about. And um, I was excited to write it for them and write something fresh and new. Mm-hmm. Um, then, you know, doing the the novels. Although, you know, when I accepted the deal for the Christmas and, and Evergreen stuff, I didn't even know what the stories were. I mean, it was like top secret because it was like the first ones. Oh, and okay. like, so you, you got in write- early for those. Yeah, they were like, do you want to write this book for us? And then I was like, what's it about? And they're like, we can't tell you. <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh, uh. And so when I got to see it first time with everybody else, when it aired, um, I was, I was over the moon. Because there were even goats in that movie. <laughs> and um, the small town and the farm yeah. and the street. Yeah. So it was just yeah. perfect. It was, it had my name written all over. It was just a perfect match. Well, you kind of like the all of my heart movies because those have lots of goats. Yes. Yeah. I do. I, love big fan. I can't believe I didn't get to write those. <laughs> <laughs> I live but, that life. <laughs> but that's really interesting that you were, you were signed on to do the adaptations even before the movies aired. I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah, I oh. was. And oh. so, uh, and I'd already done Christmas Joy and Hope at Christmas with them, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they kind of had this relationship going and, you know, it was great. And I was so excited to do it. I love the secret ingredient, even uh-huh. though the pig didn't make it, I can't believe the pig didn't make it even for like, a <laughs> and it, and so here's a funny thing too, is, um, because I think it would fly now for sure. But, um, you know, in the, the book, Gray was her get over Andrew thing you know she got this little pig to kind of help her get through him leaving and all and she named him Greg for good riddance Andrew York and and they they said right off the bat oh we can't do that that's just not nice for the movie (laughs) I was like y'all know what we really do (laughs) well I wonder if it was because that with the pig because like micro pigs can be kind of like controversial because they like most um they don't really exist. Like most, right. right exactly. Most of it's just little pigs and they turn yeah. into giant and pigs. And then, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a problem. Exactly. Maybe that's why. Yeah. But was, that would have made more sense. <laughs> was the, um, was the secret ingredient, was it always non-Christmas or did it? Yeah, uh, it, I said it on Valentine's on purpose. Okay. Because I was trying to fit it into one of their seasons. Mm-hmm. So, if I wrote a book for them, they would make it a movie, you know, I mean, cause you're, there's mm-hmm. no, there was no guarantee that if you wrote for Hallmark publishing that you'd get a movie. Right. Um, right. Right. So I, had, I, but I did align it to a holiday season just to make it a better. Fit. <laughs> so did Jenny over at Harpeth, did they like contact you about revisiting or how did that all happen? So um, I have another book coming out with Harpeth Road this year. Oh. Um, and it's called the law of attraction. It comes out in May. And it is about, uh, divorce attorney sister-in-laws and one of those sister-in-laws um, get, ends up with this artist and so anyway it's super cute book I'm so excited to be doing it and it's fun yeah so as we were working on and talking about the law of attraction I finally got my rights back to the secret ingredient and I in conversation and I mentioned it she was like well yeah you know so we ended up partnering because of that because yeah. I already had it with her yeah I'm so cool. excited and it's in great hands of oh, that cover is just adorable yeah you know? it's really fun oh my gosh and the smile on her face on the cover just mm-hmm. makes you turn right back you know and the macarons just like in the book mm-hmm. and so yeah. yeah I'm really tickled with the new cover and uh and I'm so excited that it's airing again um this Saturday February 10th and then in again in March and it comes on several times through the year all year long even yeah. though it's a Valentine's story so yeah I love it <laughs> <laughs> so so for people that haven't seen the movie haven't read the book why don't you tell people a little bit about what it's about the secret ingredient the secret ingredient it's a reunion romance small set in a small town and this gal owns this very successful bakery it's a small town bakery but she's gone on the internet and she's got this huge following there as well and she gets invited to come on her favorite baking competition this four square baking competition and but it's all secret and so none of the people that get invited on can tell anybody it's kind of like if you get picked for survivor right you can't you can't tell anybody or the bachelor right (laughs) and um andrew is also picked 
to be on the uh, the baking competition. And he hasn't been home since he left her. And he comes back to town to see his parents, thinking it'll be on the down low um, because he knows he can't be in New York City. And they're going to find out eventually he is on that show. And um, and they do uh, they do reun- reunite uh, while he's in town and they do not know that each other is in the baking competition until the very end. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are some twists and turns along the way that are just really fun. And um, in the book, there are several other threads, storyline threads, you know, in a movie, they've got about 20,000 words in a screenplay. You know, my books are 70 to 90. words, And so there are some really beautiful character arcs with Andrew um, and his dad that don't make it in the movie and and some other things that I think people really enjoy in the book. Um, But they did a great job with the movie. I mean, Uh it's except for the pig being missing. (laughs) This, the, the story that's there does, you know, fit and tie right in with the spirit and the elements in the story. <laughs> mm. Is that hard for you at all as an author to like see to just that process of seeing your work get adapted? Like, is, is that kind exciting. of challenging? You know, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, as long as it's uplifting and heartwarming, I am fine with it. Because yeah. at the end of the day, that's all I want my stories to be anyway. I mean, I set out to write one book to help one girl through one bad day. Now I'm just doing it over and over and over. And so <laughs> as long as the story is uplifting and heartwarming, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Um, Sand Dollar Cove, when that one came out, it was completely different than the mm-hmm. book. Completely. All they kept were the names of the main characters and the town name. Everything is different. Um, and at first I was like, hmm. But it is a very uplifting, wonderful story. And so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good attitude to have. I mean, it's always good in life to only worry about the things you have control over. And in that case, you have absolutely no control. So yeah, and, you I, and I have, you know, I've had some friends who've had some movies made that they are really disappointed in. And, and I think, you know, you kind of have to jimmy it down to what's important, you know, and uh-huh. as long as it's uplifting, yeah. it should be okay. Because yeah. that's what I always want. So do you find of the like major tropes, do you find that some are tougher than others or, or is there one that you like as opposed to like when you're talking about friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, second chance romance, fake fiancés, you know what I mean? These kind of archetypes. Do you find <laughs> the, the some are harder than others or ones you like better than others? Well, there's definitely some I like better than others. And it's funny because you have to be careful to say that you're never going to write one because I always thought... Oh, never write secret baby you know all right but then, yeah but then in what remains true it wasn't really i mean yeah he didn't know until she right. was little girls you know in her toddler years that he had a baby so i guess i wrote the secret baby uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so i think you know i think as long as they fit in with the story it's it's all you know and it's organic they're mm-hmm. fine when you sit down and you try to write a story to a trope i think that's when it gets hard oh interesting instead of it kind of building the story and seeing then what tropes fall in naturally. Um, I think if I sat down and said, okay, Nancy, you got to write enemies to lover. And I've written a hundred of them, you know, I'd be like. (laughs) Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense. I can see what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that enemies to lovers is extremely difficult uh, Mm -hmm. because it's just so hard to keep the characters likable enough, you know, (laughs) and that, and you have to make that switch. Uh, yeah. from them being enemies to lovers, you have to make it at just the right time. Because if they go too long, then you just don't care, and you're just like, I hate both these people. Why do I care about them falling in love? Yeah, and and not making them just conveniently enemies. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it has to be realistic that they're going to be and an enemy is tough. You know, it's yeah. not. I mean, I think friends to lovers so much easier, but uh, yeah. Now I did yeah. do. You know, Although and- friends to lovers can be really hard too, because sometimes you're just like, how can you be this stupid? How can you not realize that this person is in love with you? <laughs> like, how can you possibly be so when oblivious? You get to the friend zone with a guy, it is yeah. hard because you see them more like a brother at that point. And then yeah. it's just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the friend zone can be painful. <laughs> what? <laughs> but it's fun again. I mean, all of them can be great. I know when I know. they're done yeah. right, when they're done well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you said you're a big uh, uh, Food Network fan, big foodie mm-hmm. fan. Oh, big so, time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of my go-to 
like if I need something to watch while I'm like eating dinner or something like that, you know, it's like my go-to relax thing. Is to watch it's the it's network. My go-to relax too. Like if I am just in one of those days where I'm just, you know, high on anxiety <laughs> <laughs> or great I, British baking, that, yeah. that's also a favorite. Good one. Bake off. I'm like, how did they do that out in the tent? I would I think, they, I don't know what the weather is. I've never been over to England, but yeah, uh, you know, I'm like, and it would be huge. <laughs> would think the cakes would fall, and yeah. you know, there would be like other elements that you would have to plan for. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. in Great British Baking Bake Off, though, I do like the fact that they give them. It seems like way more time than the other competitions. Yeah. Yes, and so like so a lot of them, it's just like, what can you possibly make in twenty minutes in the first you know round of chop? Like that that thing. And, uh, and <laughs> that but, uh, is amazing, right? That they came up with the idea <laughs> and got the stuff off the shelf in 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they give them a, enough time. And I think that they give them practice rounds, uh, mm-hmm. for at least the, um, for the, uh, I forget what they call it, but that for like the, 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 uh, the, the, the um, the, they give them for the recipe one for the yeah. round, some of the rounds, they yeah. give them a, a practice round. So then it just, it just feels like, okay, I'm getting the best that they can do, yeah. which yeah. you want to see. Exactly. And, uh, Cause some of them, I don't, I, the one that was too far for me was uh, when food network did like, it was, um what was it called? Um, uh, it was like, I can't think of what it was called, but it was like chaos kitchen with, uh, with Alton Brown. And they would just like, it was like pulling pranks on these poor chefs. Like, yeah. I, like I want to yeah, actually I don't like it when they um throw in the another element, like at the very end. You know, yeah, I just like I just want to see what filming. they can. I want to see what they can do. I don't want them to have to be like on one foot, you know, bouncing something. Like, I just want to see what they. Although can I'll do. tell you, one of my favorite ones is when they kind of combine the art elements. And so they had that Halloween one where they had oh, to yeah. incorporate the pumpkins. That was fun. Oh, yeah. It was so awesome. Those, they are amazing. Yeah. And I love art and <laughs> artistic talents. And I'm yeah. one of those people that, and I'm crafty, but I'm no artist. And so, but, but when I see things like carvings or whatever, I'll be yeah. like, and I'll like buy a bunch of carving tools and then I will have spent, you know, all these hundreds of dollars to find out that I am not an, an artist. <laughs> Again, Me either. I can't work in that media either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think my favorite is probably be Bobby Flay. Yeah. I just think that one ends up being, I love the fun? format of it is really fun. Uh-huh. And it, whenever anybody has to, or anybody challenges on cakes or, uh, or like pastries or like Asian food, then, you know, okay, these uh, people are probably going to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> well, and I, I've i always said, and this hasn't happened for me yet, um, but I used to always tell everybody when I first started writing, um, well, you'll know I've made it when I have a book launch with a cake by Duff of Ace of Cakes. <laughs> I love like his cakes with all the, oh, in, yeah. and the motors. And I mean, he's like a construction worker yeah. baker you know? And so I still, that, that is my, (laughs) that's still a goal of mine is that one day I am going to have a book that is going to be worthy of a duff cake. (laughs) But those kind of fancy cakes a lot of times aren't that good because, uh, because the fondant is. Yeah. Fondant's not tasty. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's true. But but I, I I hope I'm I'm with you that uh, we can, I feel like we can make this happen. Yeah, Stop if you're listening. And we'll tell him. Do it. Well, you know, he's always saying on the kids baking one where he and yeah. Valerie. Oh, Valerie that one's good. I love her. I know. And they're always like, that fondant's kind of icky. So I'm thinking that yeah. if he made a cake for me, he would know he'd have to limit the fondant. Yeah. I would be like, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like I would throw his words back at him. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that kids baking like, one is, oh, is yeah. great show. That one actually might be my favorite. Now that I think of it, they do such a good job casting those yeah. kids are so cute and here's how much i love that show so during the pandemic um my stepson had we had had to homeschool him right right yeah yeah. with us you know three days during the week i had to homeschool him so on tuesday nights part of our curriculum was baking 
And so oh, we, good. We, we would have a competition. And so there would be points for, you know, how clever it was. There'd be points for how tasty it was. Yeah. How pretty it was, and we'd make all the family vote. Yeah. <laughs> so we both came out winners every week, which was really important, but we did some fun stuff. We yeah. really <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. <laughs> well, one of my favorite memories of my childhood, my teenage years, at least, uh, was we did these cooking contests, uh, that, uh, with my two, two of my siblings and, uh, we would research it. I mean, for months we would plan this and, uh, and, uh, our, you know, kind of big meals and, uh, and we made our parents promise they would pick a winner, <laughs> um, but they didn't really, in the end, oh. they gave, of course, they gave us each uh, like a small appliance, like a, I think I got a bread maker and my brother got like a toaster, you know, like something like that, you know, for like under $30. Uh, and, uh, and so that was super fun. And I made, I, it was great because not only did we have a great time doing it and we had a great time doing something together, which we didn't have that many common interests, especially my brother and I, but yeah. we had a great time. And we also learned like so many skills. I learned how to make homemade pasta. I learned how to make uh, cheesecake. I want to, you know, just things that, uh, that well, and there's project planning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Popping and, uh -huh. you know, you had to budget and uh -huh. math and yeah, yeah, there's so many elements that are educational. Yeah. And it was a great activity. Happen. Yeah. Well, it's I, delicious. I, anyway, win-win. I, I know you're feeling like you need to call your brother and sister and go, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> game on Easter. Yeah. there. <laughs> Yeah, hey, a rematch. Five bitches. We will see who comes out ahead. <laughs> a rematch of the great Wagner. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Oh. I'll be the judge. <laughs> okay. Zoom me in. I'll be the judge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a deal. Let's do it. Uh, well, very good. Uh, so uh, we have some fun get to know you questions that we like to do with our guests. And the okay. first one is, what is the best ice cream flavor? Coffee. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite color? Mm, red. <laughs> yeah, that's good on brand. Okay. <laughs> um, what uh, what music are you into? Country. Mm, do you have a favorite? Oh, uh, you know, I'm my heart is with Toby Keith right now since oh, we yeah. talked him, and you know mm -hmm. he was the inspiration behind Cody Tuggle in Out of Focus and Pecan Pie and Deadly Lies, and he also <laughs> made you know in the Wedding Ranch. <laughs> nice. Yep. That's, yeah. I love that you 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 talk the way you talk about your books and characters, you know, because a lot of times, and I totally get it. You know, authors will be like, "What was that book about that I wrote?" <laughs> um, but you you got it right on the top of your. <laughs> That's I know it for all of them. Like if you ask me one, <laughs> I, I do you remember one time I, I did a call and somebody brought up Wedding Cake and Big Mistakes, which was like the third book I ever wrote. Yeah. All about the father, you know, of the heroine. And I was like, oh, man. And <laughs> yeah. And well, I, I mean, horrible. I, I, I frankly was like, I hope she remembers because Secret Ingredient was 2019. That's going I back know. a bit. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. You know, some of them are just closer to your heart than others. Yeah. <laughs> Plus the secret ingredient has had ties to a lot of other stuff. Sure. And so I, I made kind of an online friendship with Aaron Cahill through that book. And then I, because I was just so thankful for how beautiful a job she did portraying Kelly in the movie, I had written the secret ingredient book of my heart and I mailed her a copy of it just to thank her, you know, no, that's cute. She, read it. she fell in love with it. She sent a review for it. The review went in the book when random house was doing the, decision on who was going to do the audio 
happened that Aaron Cahill was on the list of people. They call me, and, hey, you know, Aaron? I'm like, not personally, but I love her. <laughs> and they're like, would you like her to narrate your book? I'm like, yeah, she's from Virginia. She's got my accent. Absolutely. <laughs> and so you know, we've had that kind of continued tie. So yeah, there's just some books that just kind of, I don't know, they rally yeah. around your family. Yeah. So some- what would you say is your go-to date night food? Oh, wow. I haven't had any dates in forever. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Italian, though. I love Italian food. Yeah. So I was going to say that's what I would like. If somebody wants to take me on a date, take me out for some good tech. <laughs> somebody taking notes right now. <laughs> I guess. need a date. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is your go-to date night activity if you're going out and doing something? Oh, I would. Oh, gosh. I would want to go to a, and watch the stars. Oh, that's so cute. Yes. Yeah. I just, uh, a planetarium or a star watching night would be the most romantic night to me. Yeah. All right. I hope the dates are are taking notes, listening, because <laughs> this is good. It's good stuff. Okay. Which do you like better, dogs or cats? Dogs. Okay. Uh, which do you like better, beaches or mountains? Oh, they both bring something. I grew up in the beaches and I just moved from the mountains. I, at this age, I'm going to say the mountains. <laughs> Okay, good. Uh, what's your favorite holiday to celebrate? Christmas. Okay. And last question, and you can say one of your own if you want. What's your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? The Christmas Ornament. It's not mine. Oh, it's my okay. favorite, favorite That's a good movie. one. It is beautiful. And when I was on Hallmark Home and Family, Cameron Matheson did the, oh, I love Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and I had the great honor to meet Kelly Martin, who played the lead in the Christmas ornament. She did such an amazing job. You know, it's a story of a widow. A good one. And um, I, I got to thank her for the way she played that role and just let her know it was my favorite. So oh, nice. yes, yeah, it's, it's still my favorite. I've got it on DVD and everything else. Yep. Always will be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, very good. You answered all the questions. Congratulations. <laughs> I passed. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. You were a total delight. We'll definitely have you back on. Uh, and this was so much fun. And uh, if people want to find the book, uh, when is it, when is it released? Uh, it's the out. new reissue? It's out. it's out. Okay, good. It is out. It's beautiful. Let's see. I tried to get a, I don't even have the, my own copies yet. Oh, look how yeah. cute. It's a, I like um, the cover even better. Oh, no, it's the, so delicious. Yeah, it's a good cover. Yeah. Yes, it, it's a really good cover. And um, yeah, I hope y'all watch the movies with me. I'm doing some giveaways on my website. If you want the early news on any new movies or book sales, my website, my newsletter is the place to be. Very good. <laughs> all right. We'll have all that information in the description. So thanks again for coming on. We had a really fun time talking with you. So fun. I can't wait to come back. <laughs> I'd like to thank Nancy for coming on the podcast. This was a blast. I really enjoyed this interview. I hope you all did as well. Put all your thoughts and comments in the comment section or on Twitter. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes and on Goodreads. So check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, the Homework is Pod and Homework is Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really, really helps us out. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. And uh, thanks. And check out our Patreon and merch store. And thanks again to Nancy. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye.